Welcome to Guys in the Zone Talk Show, your place for news and tips on land and life in Costa Rica's Southern Pacific Zone. He's Rob. He's Ben. We're the Guys in the Zone. Welcome to another episode of uh, Guys in the Zone Talk Show. We're this is, we're working on a Sunday. This is a first. We don't usually do this. Uh, I'm not even sure why, but we just well, don't. I know why. It's because it's quiet on Sundays. There's nobody around. Although we did have a group of people just come in asking if this was the Uvita Information Center. Which is next door. No, I'm saying I don't know why we don't ever work on Sunday. Not why are we doing it today. I know why we're doing it today. It is very nice and quiet. I don't have an answer for that. Okay. What, why we don't normally do it, I think, is that we usually take the day off. For instance, right. what I did this morning, in case you're interested, thanks for asking, is I did what I've done the last several Sundays is I go deep into Uvita, park my car at a waterfall, walk up a hill like this, <laughs> and I time it 30 minutes until I'm or half dead, either one. And then I walk back down to my waterfall, I jump into a pool at the bottom of the waterfall, and I just go, I can't believe I live here. That's, that's a pretty good Sunday morning. It, yeah. No. And is it, this isn't really what this talk show is about, so don't pay any attention to any of that. What we want to talk about today is the zone, okay? Now, I got, I got asked this the other day. I was working with some people from Switzerland. In Switzerland, it turns out, did you know there is no language, like Swiss language? Did you know that? No, I did not. Yeah. They speak German, Italian, and French. French, depending on where you are, depending on what country is closest to that border. And these people were from the country closest to France, so they spoke French. And the first thing the gal says, she comes into the office and she says to Rod, do you speak French? To which Rod said, I used to, but I don't anymore. You said that? No, not exactly. You said no. I said no. Much safer than saying I used to, because then you'd probably have to talk. But I'm pretty good at English. Your English is good, man. He's actually an English major, is that what you're I was. A PhD. <laughs> I'm a doctor of English. English. Anyway, she ended up translating for her husband. And I said, I ended up working with him, and I said to Rod, I don't know if I can actually connect with people in this, with these uh, communication. You know, I can speak Spanish pretty well and English pretty well, but my French and broken French English is really bad. It went off really well, but in any case, long story, she said, why do you guys call yourself guys in the zone? And I said, well, because this area that we live in is kind of unusual. It's not a big area, right? From, you have Dominical, Uvita, and Ojochal, which are three towns all alongside the Pacific Ocean here, the southern, su- southern part of Costa Rica. And one of the things I wanted to add about the geography of the area that really does create a zone, so to speak, is it's the mountains coming down to the sea. It's one of the most striking things about the area. Um, it also enables a lot of ocean view property. Um, I think the hills of Malibu, Malibu or Big Sur. Big Sur, there you go. Um, so, and that's the case for Dominical, Uvita, Ojo Chal. I mean, the whole coastline is like that. Um, so, that's one aspect of the zone that I think is, is important. And well, it's, it's, it's defined itself over time and just by the natural response, if you will, or use of land in this area, and because it's an area that's made up of different towns, we call it the zone, and and uh, and that's very casual, although when you visit here and if you listen to conversations in the restaurant, the table next to you, you may hear people talking about their visit here in the zone, there is an official name of this area. The Costa Baena, which means whale coast. That's right. And I was even in on the meeting where it was voted on. It was down to Costa Verde, Green Coast, or Costa Ballena, which is Whale Coast, and Whale Coast 1. 
Although I don't think most people know it as the coast of Iana. Well, in some circles, and this is the thing, is that it's being marketed uh, internationally by primarily by the hospitality uh, industry here in the zone, in Costa Ballena. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Well, it, it's been done before. I think it was in uh, Costa Blanca in Spain. Costa del Sol in Spain. Was that made up of different towns? Just different like towns. It's Costa the, del Sol. Uh -huh. It's the Gold Coast. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. no. I've been there. It's quite nice. Costa del Sol is the Gold Coast. Uh, Sun Coast. Gold Coast. <laughs> Golden Sunshine Coast. <laughs> yes, the same. Sun Coast. They could have called this the Sun Coast as well. But in any case, so that's a little bit about what this whole thing, the zone, is about. And you may also even hear us using the term Coast of Vienna. And they are synonymous. They mean the same thing. Uh, so the top of the zone is Dominical. We are currently in the middle of the zone in Uvita. And then you've got Ojo down in the south. And we'll, we'll handle the, the different towns probably a little bit of a series here on these talk shows. Yeah. But let's let's talk about the Minicow. Okay, we're gonna start at the top. Minicow. And when he says top, he means the northern edge. Yeah, how did north get to be called the top anyways? Whose idea was that? Oh, north Pole? South. And top Pole? North. Anyway, sounds discriminatory to me. Un I'm not gonna touch that. Un PC. Dominical is the term that we all have to use in this internet related world that we live in. Because uh, when people are wanting to come down and visit the Southern Pacific zone of Costa Rica, the main term that is used for that is Dominical. Even if they have no intention on staying in Dominical, it's just the only place they may have heard of in this in this region. Well, Uvita used to, it didn't even make it into the books, the travel books, Dominical always did. It's the only one, though, that did. And now what's happening, it's kind of interesting, but Dominical essentially, I got here in 1980, uh, 1998. It was the first time I visited here. First time I moved here was 1999. And the town doesn't really look much different now no. than it did back then. I mean, there's been a lot of changes. Not to say there hasn't been changes. There's been a lot of changes, but the town looks... Pretty similar. Pretty right. similar. The road's still not paved, no. which I hope they never pay, but they're talking about pavement. That's a whole other topic. In any case, it, it, it existed and was known because of surfing. The surfing right off the beach there in Dominical is fantastic. World-class beach break. Yeah, but yeah. you got to be good. It's not a good place to learn. Well, I'm pretty good, and it beats the crap out of me. So you got to be it's better than serious, pretty good. It's, it's a serious break, no doubt about it and a beautiful beach. If you want to walk, if you want to go to one of those beach, uh, what am I trying to say, restaurants on the beach, they have one there that's really nice. If you want to get a beer, a tortilla flat, enjoy the sunset, it's really, really nice. It's a cool little town. And yeah. What we used to do, my lifestyle, when I first, my first six years in this country was living inland in San Isidro. Because we had a little family, right? We did homeschool and we did, uh, I did my internet marketing up in the higher elevation. Was, yeah, I lived about a little above 2,000 feet. But one day a week, as a family, we packed we had a box as we did it every week. We just throw it in the back of the car and we come down to the beach in Dominical and we would hang out. We had our hang out literally. We had our hammocks and uh, we'd have a, a nice lunch and we would just walk on the beach or swim. Now. We didn't know at the time, but swimming in Dominical is a little bit iffy. You know, it's not really a great swimming beach, but well, it's what we used to do. Especially when it's big, when there's a lot of, yeah, a big swell. I guess we would mainly wade, probably. But in any case, it's a gorgeous beach. We used to walk on it and, and collect seeds and that kind of thing. And it is the only beach that has a, a lifeguard. It has lifeguards on duty, making sure people don't drown. And they're uh, Which, very effective. It's a very safe beach. Yeah because of the life parts. So in any case, that's Dominical, and that's the reason it was known, and that's the reason that that word is still used so much in, in relation to the zone or the coast of Vienna. But I think in the future, we're gonna be seeing some changes, you know, and, and, and we're gonna see a sort of a migration of vernacular, of usage of terms, and just of understanding of the area. That's right. So the zone, is really a very loosely defined three-town area in the Southern Pacific 
zone of Costa Rica, and uh, the northernmost part of it, with loose definition, because we do go a little bit north of the town of Dominical, sure. is the town of Dominical. That's right. And the last thing I wanted to add is, it's all beautiful. It's all gorgeous country. And uh, that sounds very cosmic, man. It's all. Well, it it's is. all beautiful, man. It's why I live here. I moved from a beautiful place to a beautiful place, and uh, so. That's a summary of Dominical, and then maybe we'll uh, move on to Uvita next, and then on to Ochoa after. All right, thanks for watching.